AWS S3 stands for AWS Simple Storage Service. It is the feature that allows you to store your data on AWS Cloud. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can manage files on AWS S3 service. The first thing you need to do is to go to the S3 console. You can do that by going to services, either clicking on S3 or just typing S3 here in the text box and clicking on S3. Then you'll have to create a bucket. A bucket is just a container for your data. So I'm going to go to create bucket and the bucket name should be unique across AWS. So you cannot choose a bucket name that has been already taken. If you did, you're going to receive an error. So let's say for example, I'm going to choose example.com. I click next. And because this bucket name has been already taken, I'm going to have to choose another one. So I'm going to write demo one, two, three, ABC, just something random. Then you will have to choose the region where this bucket is going to be stored. And optionally, you can copy settings from an existing bucket that has been created before. Click next. Here we have a number of options that you can set. You can use versioning in which we have different versions for your files. And that adds an extra layer of protection so that when your file gets deleted by accident, you can restore it by reverting to the previous version of that file. You can also configure several options that are related to logging, like server access logging, object level logging, and you can also encrypt your objects or your files. I'm not going to choose any of those options. I'm going to click Next. And this is an extra layer of protection that AWS has recently added to S3 in order to prevent users from accidentally making their data public and thus preventing any possible security breaches. In order to understand what those options are there for, I'm going to disable the first and the second. I'm going to explain them by example. So I'm going to just create my bucket with the options that I have chosen. Click Next. And I have the chance to review all my options before I finally click Create Bucket. Now I have my bucket created. And notice here that I have a note that reads objects can be public. Now let's get inside the bucket by clicking its name. You can upload a file or a directory by clicking the upload button, add files. I'm going to choose public.txt, which is a text file. And I can either click upload to upload this file with the default options, or I can click next to configure those options. So first you'll get to choose permissions for the owner of the file. I am allowed to read or modify or delete this file. I can also grant the same type of access to other AWS users. But here, at the bottom, I have Manage Public Permissions. Here, I can grant read access to this object to the public. And notice here that AWS is warning me against doing that. I'm going just to ignore this warning, and I'm going to grant public read access to this object. Click Next. And here, I will have to choose the storage class in which this object is going to be stored. And an object is how AWS refers to your files once they are uploaded to the bucket. I can choose one of several storage classes. I'm going to choose standard, which is the default anyway. Next, then upload. All right. Now, once I upload this file, and as the owner, I do have the chance to download this file by just clicking on the checkbox next to it and clicking download either from this button or that one, like that. Now the file has been downloaded locally to my hard drive. But notice what happens if I click on this object URL. This URL is not protected, just an address. If I click on it, as you can see, I have public access to this file. Anyone who has this URL can download my file. This is what public read access means. You do not have to be an AWS user. You do not have to, have to enter any credentials or any security challenges or pass any security challenges. Just by having this URL, you can view and download the file. Okay, now returning back to our bucket, let's go to permissions, edit, and now I have the chance to re-enable the options that I have disabled when I created the bucket. I have unchecked those options. Let's check the second one, remove public access granted through public ACLs. 
this will effectively remove any read permission that I have granted to the public to any object in this bucket. Let's click save and I will have to type confirm for this change to happen. Now well, click confirm. Okay, now let's get back to the bucket itself. Again, I'm going to click on this file. I'm going to try to download it again using the public link. This time a different output is presented. I am denied from downloading or viewing this file. So owning this URL no more gives public access to this file. Okay, let's get back to the bucket and I'm going to upload another file. This time it's private.txt. Next. And again, I'm going to grant public permission for this file. Next. Next. And upload. Now, if I check this file, private.txt, and I clicked on the public link, I'm going to receive access denied as well, although I have explicitly enabled public read access for this file. As we said, this is an extra layer of protection that AWS adds to prevent users from accidentally exposing their data to the public. Let's return to the bucket. And what about the other option? Let's go to permissions, edit. And the other option here is block new public ACLs and uploading objects. If I click on that, save and type confirm and click confirm. Okay. And I'm going to go again to the bucket. Let's try to upload another file. Let's say this one next. And I'm going to try to give this file public read access. Clicking next and next, upload. And although the upload reached 100%, the file isn't there. The file was not uploaded. And if you have a look at the status bar at the bottom, you're going to see that they have an error 100% failed. That is because by checking this option in the bucket, I am no longer allowed to even upload files that have the public read access enabled. So the second option is going to remove public read access from objects that have been already granted that before. And even if I set that read access again to any of the objects that are already in the bucket, it will not be effective. While the first option will even deny me from uploading files when I set their public read access to true. Okay, so let's go back to our bucket. And still, I do have access to download any of those files because I am the owner. So the private.txt can be downloaded easily. Same thing applies with public.txt. Now, what if I want to delete those files? You can just click on any of them, go to actions, and you can delete like this. It is deleted. You can also rename them from the actions menu by clicking on the file, go to actions. You can rename the file to whatever you want, private to. You can also copy this file to another bucket if you want to can cut or copy to move so I can copy that and if I create a new bucket demo one two three four for example I'm gonna just click create to accept all the default options okay I'm gonna click create to create the bucket with the default options get inside actions and I can paste the file like this so now I have this file copied from one bucket to the other.